guys I apologize in advance for this but I thought I would open up my little uh, box of tools in the back here and let you see what I've got that I carry in my car most of the time not all of the time because sometimes I need to storage for other things and but and believe me that lifting this thing out of the back of this car is anything but fun this is the sheet for one of my uh, predator tools here I actually have two I know where one is unfortunately the other one is not in here which I thought might be the case but it's not and I've got these little small little small one goes through the belt store or velcros around the belt and one just slips over the belt these are my smaller little pouches that I carry one of which I need to clean out these are part of the small little pouches I carry when I'm going in uh, relatively light into a uh, usually a park and uh, down here uh, you know, I bought this a while back this is a very very sturdy tool but it does tend to bend a little bit on the end I'll have to beat that into position maybe grind it down a bit it's not necessary for it to be that sharp uh, it does very very well otherwise so I might have to make an alteration here uh, I've got a sand scoop I never use because of the stupid laws in Texas uh, one's the Army Corps of Engineers lakes there are very few natural lakes in Texas I think the word is there's one natural lake and the rest of them are reservoirs or dam created lakes so the Texas Parks and Wildlife and the Army Corps of Engineers basically built those lakes and it's proprietarily theirs and they live up to that uh, that belief and they don't make it too easily accessible to the public in all ways and, uh, and specifically not for detectors so you know I, I keep a lot of stuff back here this this is a uh, this is a little tool that uh, that actually broke uh, so it's not one that's going to be heavy utilized in the future now the thing is when you do these these uh, these non-standard tools they're not always built to take the pounding we give them uh, and if it's aluminum it has to be very thick aluminum this is a very thick aluminum and does pretty good on plugs if the ground is damp uh, if, the, if, the, if the ground is dry there's nothing really you can do with plugs and I've got a, a few lesh tools and lesh type tools I call these lesh type tools uh, this was an eBay purchase uh, I guess it was a a one-off or engineered uh, engineered engineered uh, thing here and I've got over here I've got a this was uh, Helico has a lot of uh, these very simple knives this is one of the bigger ones it does pretty good on plugs as well but once again it's all a matter of and this is the lash I'm gonna draw this back as far as I can this is the lace, of course. I always carry that with me because I tell you it's one of the best tools there is. It just doesn't always work in our soil around here. And this is a, uh, I don't know, I got this unconventional looking trial thing. And it does work relatively well. Uh, but it also is not a great plug creator. This one I have never used this in the field. I really do like the profile of it. It's, it's very sturdy and strong, so I will be using that in the near future. Uh, and you see my uh, my little Samson uh, shovels. That's the, uh, that's the that's the ball shovel and the standard shovel. Still have those. I don't use those very often because they are so shovel-like. So and a uh, couple of things here. Uh, this is my uh, my uh, pulse pointer, the Viper Aquatic. I do use that on occasion. It's one of my backups. Uh, this is the original Garrett that it goes brain dead occasionally uh, uh, But uh, it would be easily repaired. I'm within 10, 10 to 15 minutes driving this is the Garrett's headquarters so I can carry it down there and get them to take a look at it And uh, here's a macro pointer. It's also one of my backup pointers works real great except when you do 12 kilohertz we have a 12 kilohertz detector and uh, and if I you run my uh, and if I run my uh, uh, well, any of my detectors at 12 kilohertz it will go nuts on occasion uh, the XP Deus uh, I, I can't run 12 kilohertz and use that 
So I can if I put it up against the dais, I guess, and I do a noise cancel. Uh, or change frequencies and basically is basically what I'm talking about. You don't really do a noise cancel on the days. You just change frequencies. I can probably get it around it. And uh, you know these are some tools. These are these are some of the uh, the fist cars, uh, heavy duty aluminum tools. And like I said, aluminum tools have to be thick as all get out to function. The metal and stainless steel, in fact, this is a stainless steel, do not have to be as as bulky. And this is another one, very similar to the uh, similar to the one I just showed you. It's more along the line of stainless. Still, it is. It does look like it's in pretty pretty good structure as well. And these, this, you know, this is the one I use quite often. Right now, I am not using this as much because of the soil conditions and the fact my targets are so deep. This will go deep, but I sometimes I prefer using the the, uh, the, uh, the Raptor Predator tool, the one that's got the shovel-like uh, profile, and that that gets me six or seven inches down with just uh, one insertion, assuming I work it down far enough. And uh, and the Miracle Grow Titanium, uh, which is uh, Miracle Grow, and I've got a couple of aims here. These are the standard ones. The titanium one is shown to be very, very, very uh, uh, strong. If you do notice, you'll see a different profile on the metal ones because they do bend when you use them. The titanium is pretty much straight because the titanium flexes and then flexes itself right back. I guess you they make they make military aircraft out of some titanium parts, so that would make sense. Some other things I've got this, which is a uh, the uh, the black one of the black dagger uh, pieces, and a couple of ori ori knives. Uh, this is one. I also have a wood handle one in here. I can find that later. But uh, basically, I thought I was gonna be out here searching for something, and uh, unfortunately, I can't find it. But I did want to give you a look at some of the stuff that I carry around with me all the time. And this is a load, guys. When I grab this thing and haul it out of the back of this truck, uh, it, it's about as much as an old guy can handle. Uh, but, uh, but I try to stay in fairly good shape. So I can, I can handle it pretty good. Oh, yeah, and I use this sometime as a plug puller. Uh, not a plug puller, as a, a coin popper. And it is just basically a, uh, a panel puller for cars. And uh, also in here, I have uh, I have uh, a couple of. Them. In fact, I got three. I don't actually see the other. I had it just a second ago. Of uh, course, that's a heavy duty one. But it's in here. But you but you know what a probe looks like. This is a brass probe. This one's very long, <laughs> really long. You're not going to need the brass probe use a brass probe that deep to hit your coin uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I bought that and I think it was a uh, a uh, what is it uh, a, a a test market it had been failed and I bought it on eBay I just like to look at it and this is a this is a standard to length and that's about as far as you're gonna probe for coins most of the time so I just want to give you and here's my other I want to bring you this is the one I got from phosphorus.com now this is a big time heavy brass probe and I really like this one because I can put my whole palm and push it down and it's uh, it's very good the only issue we have is our soil can't even, can't even grab this and I've always wondered whether they should have a Teflon one uh, Teflon coated with uh, but I'm sure that'd be some environmental impact that would make some people very unhappy and I understand that all right I just want to give you a look at what's in the back of my box I showed you a while back but it has changed a lot especially it's changed by the addition of so many of these survival symbols like this one yeah, it's kind of disorganized but you got this much stuff it's, it's, impo it's impossible to organize a was it five pound of you know what in a two pound bag <laughs> so uh, so you know you have to really work at it and these and these are some of my best shovels for uh, for plug creation um, and they're small enough that you can get it in and out uh, without it uh, it causing any alarm. But I also don't use those very often except when the situation is just perfect. In any case, uh, this is Texas Psychic Dig showing you my uh, my uh, case. And it is a Contico case. And I probably bought this from uh, uh, 
I don't know, uh, one of the storage places. I can't think of exactly what, but you can probably find them online if you do want this case. Uh, pretty sturdy, you know. It's a plastic case. It's not a. It's not wooden, so uh, and it's not metal, so I'm sure it has a lifespan. And all these sharp objects eventually will shorten it, but right now it's working pretty good for me. So I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of some of the stuff I carry around with me, and uh, let you uh, take a look at it. And the, uh, I always carry around the. Uh, the almighty handy wipes too and that helps when you're out here doing a uh, a presentation in the back of your car when it's 95 degrees with a humidity probably of 95 percent oh it's pretty bad in any case uh, this is texas tiger digs and i'll give you a thought that you might like that and i will uh be back out i was out a couple of times a day it's running late now it's probably about uh seven o'clock or later so about an hour hour and a half to till uh till uh, sundown and uh so i'll probably just uh wait for tomorrow i'll decide tonight whether i'm going to do a roundup with what i've got now or we'll see i might uh, might take a run out tomorrow and try to get something to end my round off on a on a roundup on a very high point all right this is texas tiger dick catch you next time you have a wonderful day